My name is Dermot Callaghan from Chagas Horticultural Development Department. I'm here today with David Currid in Grantstown Nurseries in Waterford. He's a, a large tomato grower. David, thanks. You're welcome, Dermot. Uh, glad to have you here in the sunny southeast and a, and a beautiful sunny day here. Um, so we're in our tomato crop uh, mid-season in peak production and everything is going along nicely. You have a very impressive facility here. This is a, you, you have a hectare of controlled environment agriculture effectively, which is tomato production. That's it, so we, 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 we have two blocks of glass, uh, half a hectare in each, one, one, one uh, built in 2005 and the other in 2011, so uh, it's kind of a Dutch standard modern uh, glass house technology uh, with all the bells and whistles and uh, all the, the gadgets that we need to produce a, a commercial crop. And David, when, um, when I looked at the figures for tomato production in Ireland, I could see that we're importing about 29,000 tonnes of tomatoes into this country every year, which is almost 90% of our requirement. Yet here you are in, in Waterford, uh, producing to the same standard as the best out there. Yeah, so I suppose it's difficult. I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I'm, I'm a second generation tomato grower and, and yeah. most of the growers um, um, at the minute are second or third generation or even fourth in, in some cases, you know. So yeah. we all have a history uh, with, tomato, with tomato growing and that's a huge advantage in that the foundations for this business were built uh, back in the late 70s when my father uh, bought this business. The main pest of, of, of tomato crops would be uh, white fly, um, so it's basically like a, you know the, the cousin of the, of the common green fly that we'd all be familiar with. Um, but uh, so we, we use uh, biological control, uh, basically in, in the form of, of um, Incarcia formosa, small wasps, mm. or uh, um, Macrolophus pyjamas, or a small fly. Oh, yeah. So so we would use those as a preventative. You know, we put them in in advance of of there being a threat. Water management and nutrient management is essential in the, the kind of the, 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 the success of a crop, you know, uh, annually. So, so we're constantly monitoring the, the, the nutrient um, uh, breakdown of, of, the, of, the, of the crop. So we do that by taking a, a leachage uh, uh, sample every two weeks uh, from the roots and we send that to a laboratory in Holland and they give us a full breakdown of what, what, what nutrient is in the, in the runoff. Um, um, di from this year, we started doing a uh, uh, leaf analysis as well. So that's where that's given us extra information uh, that kind of informs our use of fertilizers over the over the coming weeks. You know, and that that we found that to be really really beneficial. You know, it's, it's no different to to, to agriculture or, or vegetable production out in, on the land. You know, uh, with this, this, the same nutrients we require, but the fact that we're in a closed system, so any leachage is we we are uh, recovering that sterilizing it and reusing it as well so that's it's, it's basically we don't have any leachage uh, leaking into the uh, into the soil and um, so potentially interfering with uh, um, uh, water sources on the ground you know so okay. uh, it's a very very efficient way of, of, of production so this this one hectare of production which is 10,000 square meters of glass house um, is it is it a four meter or five meter glass to the how high is it so five meters to the, to the gutter and that's the, that's where the measurement is done so I'm standing directly under the gutter here so okay. we're five meters up there um, and that that you know creates a lovely growing environment for for a for a crop as you can see the tomato crop is very long yeah. you know when it's growing almost a foot every week it needs space to grow into you know and, yeah. and this gives us a really good uh, climate for the, for the crop to, to grow in. So carbon dioxide, you know, as we all know, with the, with the climate crisis that we're all experiencing at the minute, it has got such a bad rap. But you know, for us and uh, glasshouse uh, and producers in general, particularly tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers, uh, carbon dioxide is essential to uh, to commercial viability of our of our kind of um, production. So you know, without uh, using uh, carbon dioxide enrichment for the plants. Uh, we, our production would drop by at least 20% right. and could be as high as 30%. Okay, so I'm just going to do a tally here so far, David. We're talking about nutrient use efficiency in terms of you have a closed system, you're minimising the inputs in terms of uh, nutrition, but you're also collecting and recycling anything that does go spare back into the system to yes. be sent around and used. Yeah. You're using the CO2 from your heating system to enrich the environment to increase yield up to about 20 percent, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So yeah. that's a good news story all well, around. It's a it's, it's a story that we're anxious to get across and to be able to you know get our message to people that you know that Irish food is grown in such a sustainable manner already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
how is the market rewarding you and how is that market relationship in terms of uh, it giving you a premium for these sustainability credentials? Yeah, and so that's the we, we, you know Irish tomatoes in, you know are, are broadly accepted by all the retail buyers that you know we can produce a product that's superior to what can be imported. Mm. Um, our biggest issue is that we can't produce at the costs that can be produced by large scale growers mm. in Holland in particular and, and Spain in the winter time. Mm. Um, but I mean, if we can produce a, a very good tasting uh, product. Um, in a, that's grown in a very sustainable and environmentally friendly way. Mm. Um, the retailers are willing to, you know, pay us a premium for that product, mm. and uh, you know that's really we're dependent on the customer ultimately to pick up our product and support Irish growers. Um, but without you know the grower and the grower, the retailer and the customer have to be kind of uh, that synergy has to be correct for, to make it work for us. Okay. Certainly, there's, there's scope for, for, for expansion, there's no doubt, um, because the market is certainly increasing. And I think certainly over the last 15 months, with all things uh, COVID-related, people's uh, perception of local food and the provenance of food in general has, has increased. So I think, you know, there certainly is, uh, there is potential. Uh, there's huge capital investment issues around getting into this business, uh, which can be a block to young growers trying to make their way. Um, so generally what you're finding is that the, the existing growers are, are expanding their, their, their production units uh, to become more efficient and probably encourage younger growers into the, into the market as well. You can, there is a perception out there that a lot of food is you know, all pumped full of chemicals and, and you know, plant protection products and, and, and pesticides, you know, but I mean that's just not the case. Um, as regards Irish growing tomatoes in particular, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're producing, you know, to a very high standard, uh, very responsibly. And that's, you know, that's uh, the, the kind of the general ethos of all, all growers here, you know, um, because if we have to, to remain viable within the market, we have to produce good food, you know, at a, at, uh, at a value that's economically viable for our business and that's affordable for the customers. We have on our one hectare uh, dermis, we have uh, 47,000 tomato plants. Um, uh, those plants are sown in Holland in mid-February uh, each year. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll arrive to us in the first week in January. Mm -hmm. uh, the crop grows then. Uh, we won't get any red tomatoes until around St. Patrick's Day. And then we'll start supplying the Irish market from like the last week in March until mid-November. Okay. And then from mid-November to Christmas, we have, we have to take everything out. It's an annual crop, so we have to remove all the dead foliage, plants, sterilise the whole glasshouses, clean up everything and get ready to go again. There must be considerable uh, demands in terms of training the crop and presenting it, you know, like it's currently uh, in terms of pruning and, and tying and so on. Yeah, so it's like each plant has to be visited every week. Uh, the plants uh, during peak season will be growing approximately 30 centimetres every week. So it's a constant, you have to keep up with the crop and the more sunshine we get, the longer the days, the more the crop grows. How do you manage this, this uh, action where the leaves have been uh, landed on the ground? How do you, how do you um, look after the hygiene element of that? So as the crop grows um, during peak season, you know, the crop will be growing about 30 centimetres every week. Um, so you know, it produces more leaves, fresh leaves at the top. Um, as the leaves on the bottom get older, they need to be uh, removed from the plant. Mm. So that's done manually by guys going along, just cutting off the leaves or breaking them off, uh, putting them on the ground. And then after about four or five days on the ground, this machine goes along and sucks them up, composts the leaves, and then they're removed to a compost heap, which is turned into farmyard manure and returned to the land. We have six uh, staff full-time full, full year-round, uh, mainly uh, skilled labour working on the crop. Um, and then f when, when the harvesting season starts, like in mid-March, um, we'll take on seasonal staff then that'll, that'll mm -hmm. stay with us until kind of, you know, the end of November, mid-November when, when, when we stop uh, production. So at this, this time of the year, mid-season kind of peak production, we have 15 people on site. Okay. So it's a, it's a high, uh, you know, uh, a wage uh, demand on, a, on one hectare in comparison to some other ways of cropping. Um, so everything has to be right and, you know, it has to be done in a very efficient manner. Could you describe the market, the product mix that you grow on the market? Yeah, so I suppose we're kind of aiming probably at the higher end of the market, uh, Dermot, um, probably into the kind of like the Tesco finest uh, Dunn's, Dunn stores, uh, Simply Better and, and uh, Super Value Signature Taste brands, you know, so it is the, the upper end of the market. And again, it's a lot of this is kind of, you know, colours, shapes, different sizes, you know, all kind of different consistencies, 
you know, different levels of sugar and acid mix, you know, so it's uh, um, certainly like uh, 20 years ago, uh, the tomato market was, you know, fairly um, you know, rudimentary and you, you just had kind of round tomatoes and that was basically it, you know, but uh, now you have such a, a broad selection of tomatoes and, and, you know, the supermarket shelves are full of Irish tomatoes at this time of the year, June, July, August, into September, uh, there's no reason why anybody can't buy Irish produce. talking about the uh, sustainability elements of the business and so on and you, you mentioned to me that you have um, rain harvesting systems on the pack house and on the glass houses um, is is how's that working for you fantastic you know and like we're, we're fully sustainable uh, as regards uh, our our demand for for water you know so we're, we're harvesting rainwater we, we have a storage for about a thousand cubic meters or a million liters of, of water and with our recirculation systems and that, you know, that means that we can be uh, so totally self-sufficient. Self and I know that driving in there you have PV panels as well on the, on the, the roof there um, for, for electricity purposes. That's right, yeah, yeah. So in, in, in 2018 we installed um, PV panels on the roof of our pack house. Um, and that's worked out really well, you know, it's, it's, so we're, 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 we're supplying about 20% of our electricity demand is coming from the roof. You know, it's great to see the, the days that you're, you know, we're not taking any electricity off the grid. Mm. And when you're taking a product like this into the marketplace, uh, David, is it like traceability and having professional credentials in terms of accessing the market and giving confidence to the market? How do you achieve that in the business? Yeah, so that's that's that's, that's crucially important to us, you know, because uh, um, every pack of tomatoes that we have here, um, once it's wrapped, it has it has its own separate code on it, traceability code, which says what day it was it was picked on, what day it was packed on. So we know we can trace back the tomato to to. Uh, the time it was hanging on the plant, so that's that that uh, provides great assurance for us and for our customers as well. In case there was any problems down the line, which fortunately is is few and far between. David, uh, I know you're you're a, a member of a PO. Can you describe the producer organisation scheme for you? What it means for you as a grower? Yeah, so we're part of a quality green producer organisation, which has been in in being since 2003. Um, we have six growers um, growing uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. Uh, mainly along the east uh, coast from where the furthest south in Waterford, so we have uh, growers in Wexford, uh, North Dublin and as far north as Dundalk, just, just south of the border. So um, we're, we're producing about uh, just under nine hectares of, uh, of, of crops, um, all marketed under the Quality Green um, banner, uh, which gives us you know, a bit of a, a clout, maybe is the wrong word, but you know, it gives us a bit, a bit of strength in, in, in numbers when we go and deal with supermarket uh, multiples. Um, that they, you know, that they know what we can. If we, if we, if we make a commitment to deliver um, X amount of product, that we can come up with it, you know, and so it uh, works very well. And as a Department of Agriculture funded scheme, they're the competent authority who administer the scheme in Ireland. Um, are you, um, you know, taking advantage of like how do you, in terms of the the operational program of the producer organisation scheme, how do you, what actions do you take within that, and how does how do those actions benefit you? Yeah, so I suppose it's 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 very uh, largely based around environmental actions, you know, and that's there there the actions that each individual grower can implement on site. Uh, so we do a lot of things around uh, you know grafted plants that that uh, build in uh, strength into the plant that uh, you know reduces the need for, for plant protection products. Uh, we use um, terminal fixed terminal screens in the in spring time of the year, so that reduces our energy input. Um, so like you know there are just two things that, to, uh, two examples of of the actions that we use and like there the fact that we can re receive funding from Europe and um, because it's all European money that we're drawing down there's no Irish taxpayers money involved um, you know it's a, it's, it's a great scheme uh, it has its difficulties in, in administration and, and uh, you know complying with all the rules and regulations but uh, you know we've been in it for a long time now and, and um, you know, we're, we're, we're happy with it thanks David <laughs>